The following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. Hello and good evening, everybody. It is Thursday, September 21st, 2023. Welcome to the only show about Spartan Dogs, hosted by Spartan Dogs. This is Sparta MSU. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, J.U. Choo Choo Culkrick. Otis Wiley, the boss, he's on assignment. He's at Reno's taking care of the coaches show right there in the East Lansing area. If this is your first time, watching the show, we want to thank you and welcome you. And if this is not your first time, absolutely, we praise you. Thank you for all of your consistent um, subscriber and viewership. This means the world to us, for us to have this platform to be able to bring what we know to you. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us a whole lot, doesn't cost you a thing. And let us know where you're watching us from. Chew, right now, you know where they're watching us from? Where? They're watching us from. Motown, Modesto, California. Ooh. Camp Lejeune, baby. We got people watching us in Cleveland. The land. The city where we come from to run, run. All those places. And Milford, Michigan. You see Ooh. you, Pops. Hey, what up, so Milford? Listen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look. What's up, Stephen? <laughs> Stephen Smith in the house. So we got a, 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 a nice little itinerary today. You know, we have a special guest. we got Corey Robinson for 247 Sports is going to join us. We're going to break down the Maryland game. We're going to talk about recruiting. What does this mean as far as the transfer portal? All these things. But we have to talk about some of the Olympic sports right now. Spartan Athletics Update. Chu, the Spartan Athletics Update, we're going to start with women's soccer. Absolutely. Let's get after it. Women's soccer. Uh, they play to a draw against high state um and they're playing right now versus minnesota uh men's soccer the women's soccer they're going yeah, we can throw it back there see oh, that little okay. corner that corner kick action that's coming up there let's we'll see that play. corner kick one more time yeah see that corner kick let's see if we can't we did anything off it or not we just we can watch it and be quiet at That's skill. That's skill. That's we that was that one one draw you're talking about against Ohio State. Yes. And then the men's, you know, they played Rutgers. And uh they also played to a draw versus the Scarlet Knights. Um, MSU's men's team, they are still undefeated and ranked 18th mm. in the top draw and number 22 in the United, United Soccer Coaches poll. And their next game will be Friday tomorrow versus Indiana. Mm. So we got some uh, soccer action going on. Um, women's golf. Uh, Katie Lou named Big Ten Golfer of the Week after winning the Mary Folsom Invitational. Um, also, too, for you round ball fans out there, the men's and women's uh, basketball schedule was released. Mm, can we see that schedule? Do we have it? We got some uh, big games coming up there. This is this is that the men's schedule there, that big one, you know, that little exhibition game against Tennessee on October 29th. It's coming up. You know, we got James Madison coming to town. A lot of a lot of big games, you know. We, you know, we're gonna talk more about round ball when round ball season comes around, but it's not that time yet. It's still football season, Stray. Did I see Duke on there? I think that was – I mean, everybody, that's the one. We got, we got some red letter games, you know what I mean? Before we get to the women's schedule, we're going to go to them. Let's see – Let's. I saw Duke. Yeah, there it is in Chicago, November 14th. 
that's right after the Ohio State game. So it's coming up. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, man. It's exciting. You know, everybody's going to be excited for basketball season when it comes. We still got a lot of football to go, but we're going to talk about the women's schedule here. If you can pull that up, Tony. All right. Got a little Davenport exhibition, Oakland, Wright State. Then they start getting into it, man. Then Nebraska kicks off the Big Ten season uh, December 9th. I think that's what that said, December 9th. So it's it's exciting. You know, they want to be preemptive. And uh, Athletic director Alan Haller wanted to get that out there for the fans to be able to make their travel arrangements early. All right. So, look, you know, we wanted to give a nice little athletics update for everyone right now. But we're going to bring – Corey Robinson on in a moment after this message from our friends over at IHOP. Drop the pancakes. Introducing new buttermilk biscuits in sweet and savory flavors. So everyone can have their perfect biscuit. Or add one on the side. Get a breakfast biscuit sandwich with a side for just $7 for a limited time. See? All right, without further ado, let's bring on Corey Robinson. You know, we got to have three guys on here. Otis is busy doing, you know, the work of the children of Michigan State Athletics. But Corey Robinson for 247 Sports joins This is Sparta MSU. Welcome back to the show, Corey. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Always a pleasure to come on. And, you know, we always have fun with it. And I'll, I'll try and uh, pick up some of Otis's slack tonight for you guys. We need it. We got to have it. All right. Look, James Wynn calling you the GOAT. He's here. <laughs> Everybody, welcome, Corey. <laughs> so, so, shoot, look, we got to get right into this, right? So, in the wake of the Mel Tucker situation, you know, people want to know, inquiring minds want to know, first, at the 2024 recruiting class, I know that you have relationships with these families, the recruits. What are you hearing on the streets? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to – be tough just because you're being out there hanging a little bit and Michigan State coaches you know usually when you're recruiting a kid you're recruiting the school you're recruiting you and all of that stuff where now you can't really necessarily recruit yourself because you don't know that you're going to be there but you give credit to Michigan State's coaches you know they they're recruiting for the university right now and if they do have keep their job then great you know but they're they're just coaching you know just like it's normal with a, a little bit of a change up saying hey be patient with us uh you know we'll they'll get a guy in here you know michigan state still michigan state so i think maybe they've turned like their attention or, or their how they recruit a little bit more about hey come play for me over to hey come play for michigan state because there's still a lot of good things at michigan state they have the new facility that I think will be wrapped up sometime in October, November. So all of the guys that come in will have a brand new facility, which is state of the art. Uh, Michigan State obviously has always had great funding from uh, the university uh, as far as, you know, like getting good coaches in here and staff. I think, you know, they showed with uh, Mel and his staff. I think, you know, he's making he was making nine point five million and had one of the higher paid assistant coaching pools plus i mean probably probably damn near 100 staff members outside of that as grad assistants <laughs> analysts nutritionists like i mean there's a lot of good things that that michigan state provides for these guys even in the times that it's uncertainty like that stuff's still going to be there so yeah i mean it's tough though cuz you have other schools reaching out to them and they have something that's set. Like they know who their coach is going to be most likely outside. You know, at least I feel like it's set right now. Coaches always change on the dime, but you know, you know who your position coach is going to be, you know, who your head coach is going to be. So, you know, that's a, a major disadvantage for Michigan state to have to face that so early because these coaches aren't just, you know, holding on for a month until there's a new coach. Like this is, this happened before game three of the season. So you, you got to go the entire season basically until probably December when they name a coach. So that's a tough, tough spot. So definitely if there's a lot of sharks in water with uh, the recruits, which I mean, Michigan State would be the same if it was someone else. So 
that's just the nature of the beast. So you got, you know, Andrew Dennis, the the four star offensive lineman from Mount Pleasant. You know, he's picking up offers like multiple offers a day. It seems like since the Mel Tucker stuff broke, uh, and he'll be visiting Illinois this weekend, and he'll go see some places. I think with Michigan State, like obviously they're not in an ideal situation with anybody, but with him, I guess what you can hang on to is he's a guy that's been to campus so many times that he's like formed a relationship with the current players. So maybe you can see something where for him, it becomes the current players that are going to stick around and they know they're going to stay around. Maybe they start recruiting him and saying, Hey, this is still Michigan state. This is still what you came for. Uh, even with the uncertainty, but then Nick Marsh, obviously everybody's reaching out to him, Colorado with Dion where, like, you know, they're obviously a hot team right now. They might not be so hot after Oregon uh, plays them this weekend. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but right now, everything's great in Boulder. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, so they got teams like that that are always going to come around. So they're not yeah. in a good spot. Like, I'm not going to, I can't sugarcoat it and say everything's going to be fine because it's not like they're going to lose players. That's just the nature of it. Right. But, the things and I, I think they're they're in a tough spot being out there so early into the season. No, yeah, that's how that's what we want. We want the truth. You know, it doesn't need to be rosy and all green colored glasses if it really isn't. Uh, you know, this is a this is a big deal. We talked about it on our last show. Uh players are going through a lot, but we just want to be able to navigate through these treacherous waters that are that are right now in, in college football. When you look at the decision, are you hearing um, that there's like, okay, you brought up Nick Marsh, you brought up AJ Dennis. Uh, mm-hmm. There, are you hearing from other schools that, hey, the, this is the thing that is it allowable now to go, or is it just always has been the thing that it can be wide open? Because I know about this 30 day portal opening this window. So, can you explain that a little bit for everyone so we can get educated on it? Yeah. So, so for the, the, recruits that doesn't necessarily have any effect on them but for like the current players uh yeah once that kicks in then obviously and then the like we're not naive in college football like these guys are going to reach out before they can reach out as soon as they knew there was kind of blood in the water uh so you know you're obviously gonna have to recruit your own players but like for me like i, I don't know if it's the old school me or this but i just don't see like a ton of benefits in leaving mid season, a, a big on completing what you are. And then as far as if you transfer, you're not going to play at the other school this year anyways, this week far into it and getting into the middle of a, a semester academically, all that stuff. So to me, I, I put tape out there. Like I get it. Like if you want to, uh, you know, preserve your red shirt. If you have one left, then sure, th- that's your choice or whatever. But I'm big on finishing your circles. Uh, so, so hopefully, I, I guess you know their position coaches are all there, everything. Uh, so that doesn't change. Like, yes, yeah, Mel Tucker's gone, but you, a lot of these guys committed to Michigan State because of the position coach and the relationship they had with them, and those guys are still here. So I'd like to see you know a lot of those guys finish it just because like i said there's not a ton of benefit in leaving in this window and then you know also i think it's big like you're a parent jason i'm a parent uh of like teenagers where like i i'd like to think that everyone wants to make the decision without the emotion involved so like you go play this season it's december and you still want to leave then great you know that was the right decision. You didn't make it emotionally. So so it'll be interesting to see how, how the coaches can pull it together. And I think this is a big week for them on the field and off it because if they were to hang an egg against uh, Maryland, that's game four in the season. So some of those guys that do have the ability to redshirt, maybe they – they pull out and hit their red shirt just to preserve that. So it'll be definitely interesting to see how it goes. Uh, I think you're always going to have people leave in these situations when there's the coaching change. There's no way around that. But if if they can hang on to the vast majority of those guys 
and go out and just finish strong in the season and see where where you want to go in December. I think that that's the advice I would give my son if he was at Michigan State or Maryland or any school in the, the country is just finish what you started with your teammates and your coaches that are here because there's still a, a couple hundred really good people in that building that you came here for. So so we'll see how it goes at, this weekend, and I think that will play a, a huge factor on what we see as far as guys transferring out or whether they stay until and complete their circle. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely it's not, you know, it's uncharted territory. It's not often that you, you see a coaching change in week between week two and week three of a season. So, yeah. so we're kind of learning together, honestly, what's going to happen. Right. Absolutely. You know, all this stuff's crazy. And uh, to your point, you drew some very good points there, Corey. Yeah. And you talked about finishing your circle. And uh, also, too, some of these guys that don't have the red shirt and, you know, they may have be in their sophomore season, and they're that unknown, still play this. You got to put film out there. Yeah, You have yeah. to put film out. And the film that you want out there is not that Washington film yeah. <laughs> from last week. <laughs> you know, that you're on someone else's highlight. So, yeah. you know, stay the course put, and be part of something. Be that foundation. Too, because no matter what happens now, and that's the same thing Coach D'Antonio told us, you know, when he came in, you know, you guys that are here, you are building that foundation to what's happening, especially those seniors that are on the team, building the foundation for what the next 10 years of Spartan football will be, you know, and so that is something that's that's really interesting. And I'm I'm fortunate, you know, when those guys were out there for the Rose Bowl celebration and Coach D, he's there, he's on the side, he's like, it started with you. It started with you guys, you know, building that foundation there. So keep that in mind for these players that are still there. And also, too, we're two and one. <laughs> the people, you know, that loss, people think to forget that we still have a winning record. The Big Ten season is still here. Anything can happen. I know, you know, we're still, all our goals are still ahead of us. Yeah, and that, like to, to jump in real quick and before you talk, Jason, is uh, that's right. like that's the thing is like you can't, the coaches can't sell like that they're back because they don't know that. But Michigan State's fan base and that atmosphere, like that sells. Right. Like that. And like maybe it's a 25 or a 26 recruit, right? He's got plenty of time to get recruited by the new staff. Mm -hmm. But what he's going to remember is the facilities, the campus, and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, that's where the fans, you have to step up where, like, yeah, you lose being able to say, I'm going to be your coach. Like that might not be the thing, but but they they will remember the atmosphere that you guys made on Saturdays there. Absolutely. I mean, you brought up a lot of great points, and, and Corey, for a second, I just want to kind of revisit some of the things you said just to be able to get some clarity on them. And you talked about mm -hmm. transferring mid year. So the rule is, when a coach leaves, resigns, or is fired, whatever it is, then the transfer portal will open up and be allowed. You you are allowed to enter the portal, but is that for what if you've already transferred to Michigan State in this scenario? Yeah. So from what I've gathered is if you have a transfer already, then you're not, you don't get, this window doesn't open for you. So that, that's mm -hmm. a, that's a caveat that was kind of new. I heard that today too. And like, I'm like, all right. And I, it makes sense because you can't, you know, it's the same rules. You can't just have guys jumping all over the place and but the NCAA is wild enough. So, so, so that, that's a, definitely a layer. So you look at the guys that transferred to Michigan state, like, like they would have to sit. So. Mm. Hmm. And then, and now if you haven't transferred yet and you, you know, you're at Michigan mm -hmm. state, you haven't used a transfer. Are you eligible to play? We've heard, I've heard a lot of smoke that guys could leave and then be eligible to play right away. Is that true? What, uh, what I've gathered from everyone I talked to just from the educational part, because they are student athletes, is you can't just Don't forget go, that part. Yeah, like you, you can't <laughs> just go in mid-year and do a semester at another university. Like there's there's credit transfers and all of that stuff that come into play. So, mm. and, and then, I mean, like besides the obvious, like you guys both played football at Power 5 level. You know how much it is. You don't just like this isn't like the NFL trade deadline. You don't just show up <laughs> and, and play. Like you don't know the playbook. You don't know all this stuff like that. That's a, a tough ask to, 
even if you were academically able to do it. Like that's a lot for a college kid to pick up everything he knew, move over to another campus and then and then just go play like like you know what they're doing out there and that you're accustomed to that or you know, so yeah, it's that definitely would be tough even if you could do it. Yeah, and my, my question to to it as well too is um it is a question for everyone in here. It's uh if you're a if you're Michigan State and you have a guy that comes up to you and say, Hey, I want to ratchet, I'm transferring, I'm hitting that portal, I don't want to play. Now, Michigan State, like, do you be like, okay, you can do it, but you're not going to be able to use our weight room to train? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, those are some of the things to keep in mind as well. Like, you can't just say you're going to be doing this, but you're not You're not going to be coming in and get bigger, stronger, faster to go somewhere else yeah. on us. Yeah, and that, that's what I heard, like, people bring up, like, well, they could go sit there and they go work with their trainer. I'm like, their trainer's, their trainer's not a college it's that. Right. Like, they still like have that, to go to classes. That, that's not just... the same. And and you still have to go to classes. You still like like reps are reps. Like whether you play or it's in practice, you're getting reps, you're getting better. Mm. So so like for me, like just looking at it without the emotion involved into the decision, like to me, I, it just doesn't make sense to leave before the end of the season. Like, like I get it. Like if you wanna like may, maybe you know because we we know that people promise money for nil stuff or whatever and yeah if a guy's getting some like a good amount to say hey just sit this out then yeah that's different but i don't know how many people necessarily fall into that category off of that washington film mm-hmm. <laughs> but right. uh, but i i mean so, right, so like, there, there's a the lot point. of wrinkles that we don't know but yeah like it doesn't there's not a lot of wrinkles that make sense from the outside looking in. So you're bringing up that red shirt point that let's sit out to preserve a year, right? Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> let's, so to, to explain to the, the viewers and listeners out there, a year is not a year until you've played in five games, five. correct? Yes. Yeah. Five, five games. So, you know, when this, this suspension happened, Corey, it, this was the end of week two going into week three, the suspension of Mel Tucker. And we were all, you know, obviously trying to figure out, and you know, as the dust is settling, trying to make heads or tails of things. But we were told there's a hearing in October, which, you know, that's after week six of the season. The, the, the move to fire Coach Mel Tucker for cause in the beginning of week four has now opened this. Pandora's box that you're talking about this should we redshirt or should we not had that not occurred are you telling me that players would not have this option to be able to sit out and potentially have a lot of you know the players you know not wanting to participate in games going forward yeah yeah definitely and I that was something that I saw like online with some people that are on the outside where they were saying, oh, it's convenient that the hearing, you know, they they literally knew nothing about the timing and that it was set up way ahead of time before anybody even knew he was getting suspended. But, you know, they were like, oh, that's convenient that the timing's then, so then the guy can't leave, blah, 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 which, I mean, obviously they couldn't have really left in a good way anyway. So I guess I, I think it was kind of a surprise just because, like, I figured it seemed cut and dry that they were going to – wait until that hearing to to make any final decisions but may, maybe they just wanted uh i guess to to get out in front of it so they didn't look like they were making a decision uh because the public pressured them to so by making the decision they did now i guess it was more maybe a pr thing where and like i'm not in that room i don't know what their thought process was i'm just like thinking out loud what's the benefit to it rather than doing the hearing. And the only thing that really popped into my head was that it shows that the, the Michigan state people are getting, want to get out and ahead of it and not just make every move because it became public or because the public pressured them to do something like we saw at Northwestern where it kind of just took on a life of its own. And uh, it seemed like maybe the public kind of made the decisions for Northwestern in a way. Mm. 
Yeah, you're talking about Pat Fitzgerald with the, yeah. you know, hazing scandal there that, you know, there was uh, a suspension granted to him behind, you know, there was an investigation of suspension and then boom, out of the blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, an anonymous player comes forward and it caught fire. And next yeah. thing you know, Pat Fitzgerald is no longer the head coach there and they're scrambling as well. Yeah, that's what I almost wonder is Michigan State see that and they just like, I don't want. I don't want to wait for a fire. So then it looks just like, like we made it a second time because it got public. So, so, but yeah, it's, it's tough to say not being in the room, but, but yeah. like, like they didn't do themselves as a football program with preserving the players that it make it easier, I guess, for them. So, so they made the tougher decision for themselves. So it wasn't like necessarily a decision that you can see a lot of benefit for Michigan State football to make it as quickly as they did. Right. Well, hey, look, that's some great insight. I, I think that, you know, we we have to get behind who's there now. You're talking yeah. about, you know, the players, the coaches, the, the, the uh, recruits, anybody that is looking at Michigan State, they're going to be looking at the environment, the atmosphere, yeah. the facilities, all those things the student body as a whole, the people that are on the team, but it's a little different anyway, all around the yeah. country, because those teams do kind of turn over year over year. Yeah. yeah. Cause we look at what's going on in Colorado, but you know, Corey, when you, when you look at, you know, Michigan state where, where they are right now, and you get a lot of people talking about who the next head coach is going to be. And every, we're not going to make a show here about yeah. a top list of, you know, who the hot candidates are. But I, I can't help but see in our own chat, like, there's a ton of talk right now about Urban Meyer. I, like this is like to me, I mean, are you, do you, do you, do you know, are you, have you ever Googled Urban Meyer? Have you ever looked back at what he's done in the most recent, like, you know, look, we're not talking about what happened in Florida when he had, you know, heart issues and he resurfaced right away and went to Ohio State and then he had brain issues caused by things not n allegedly medically related yeah. however you know his last stop at jacksonville like there's no possible way you no. remember remember him at jacksonville ladies and gentlemen he decided not to go <laughs> back with the team and someone filmed him at a bar and he was you know this is not the kind of thing that you want yeah. at michigan state right now i, I just you know yeah. I, i'm not judging the guy i just don't think that he passes the vetting for Michigan State football, I don't understand that part. You know, Chu, do you, would you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, I got thoughts on it. Urban is not a good fit for Michigan State. Uh, you know, it, he is, um, he is, he's not a good dude. <laughs> you know, overall, he, he's he's a. Don't get me wrong, he's a good coach. He wins, but he's not a good dude. And uh, at Michigan State, you want people that are good dudes. You know, people that can come in and uh, be sitting in the living room, you know, with the family. And that still holds weight. I know people talk NIL and money and everything like that. But that trust in your coach, that still carries a lot of weight with a lot of people, with a lot of, you know, mothers out there. You know, football is, um, you know, there's a lot of single moms, you know out there that have athletes, you know, that are going to come to these schools. They want to know they're going to have uh, a father figure. The kid's going to have a father figure, someone that can show them the right way and everything like that. But, uh, you know, so it's, it's, um, I don't even think urban should be in a discussion. I don't think, I think it's a, you know, people are looking for a splash, a sexy pick and, you know, by throwing his name out there, but he's not even in that. He shouldn't be in the discussion. Yeah, for for no, me, like like he he can't, yeah, he can't be. Variant Nick Saban should not come back, either. Okay, who, who can't? Nick Saban. Yeah, uh, he, he, he's coming back. Al Nick, Alabama fans gonna run him out of town, and he's gonna come, Al, Nick, come Nick, for the prophecy. Nick, no, Nick ain't coming back here. Nick ain't coming. But back here. but yeah, I, I'm with you guys with Urban too. Like I just don't see any avenue that works due to the certain circumstances because. Because you just got rid of a coach because of some decision making off the field, and Urban Meyer, <laughs> what his stuff goes a lot deeper. I mean, there's, you got you got Aaron Hernandez. You got you got a whole lot of other things happening nope, there. No just, pun or pun, pun intended. Yeah, Which one? <laughs> just, just like like you, you you can't you can't like fire a coach because of 
poor choices off the field and then go, go replace them with a guy that's hiding murders and domestic <laughs> assault on the staff and all the other like all the other stuff like which like would be the main story for most people is just the side story for him so i just like you can't and the, you can't do it after <laughs> what you're going through right now because if if you're if you're the coach or the people that supported that the the previous coach and and then you see them bring in somebody that's morally done worse even like like how how do you sell that to to your trustees and your fan base <laughs> Uh, yeah, Ju Culker for coach. Go ahead, Ju. <laughs> no, I don't want none of that smoke. <laughs> I don't know that vetting process. How deep it goes? <laughs> and it goes all the way back to Liberia, <laughs> right? Uh, but I will, I will say this. I know Stray. You, you didn't. You said we're not going to go and lay out. I have three. No, I have three. you want to do yeah. it? You want to go I, there? Three, excluding, excluding. Harlan Barnett, let's say Coach Barnett is not part of the discussion, but my top three would be Lance Leopold from Kansas. Okay. Seeing him turn programs around and what he did with Rock Chalk. Number two, Brian Hartline oh. at Ohio State. Offense but, coordinator uh, receiver specialist. But the thing with Brian that scares me is, I don't think he'll be here long enough because as soon as something some something happens to Ryan Day, him and Luke Fickle will be in a night fight in the parking lot at in Columbus to see who gets that job. So he's you know there, and then obviously um, old boy from Duke, you know those are the top three there because though Lance Leopold, he's my top one there because he turned a lot of programs around. What he did um, even at University of Buffalo. You know, want their turn, turn that program around, put them, you know, on the map in the MAC conference, won a MAC championship, went to, took them to a bowl game, then went to Kansas and did a tremendous job there. So those are the the three there, and then the, like I said, obviously the guy from Duke turned that Duke program around. So, and I think they have some prowess in the recruiting in the recruiting world as well. Yeah, I, I think my three, I guess if we're going to do top threes. <laughs> um, hey, yeah, I, I'm not in that. Go ahead, do it. Uh, Let me hear your stuff. Uh, let's, let's break you, it down. you mentioned the Duke coach, Mike Elko. I think he makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you can, this isn't Duke basketball. Like, if you can win at Duke in football, like, like you're a good coach. Like, and then Did he, he win he, nine he, games last year? Yeah. yeah, and he's got him in the top 20. So, like, for them to be in the top 20 is at, absolutely amazing at a program like that because not only do they have no real funding for football but the academic standards at that school that's one of the the few schools that hold those high for their places like everybody says they do but duke is one so so i go mike elko because he's also had the time with jimbo so he's recruited nationally at that top power five level too so he's got that part with him uh sean lewis offensive coordinator at Colorado. Uh, he's got ties to the Midwest because of uh, being at Kent State. And Kent State, like, like if you can win a, a MAC championship with the funding they don't have there, like, you're a good coach. And, like, you give him a lot of credit because you look at him where he sat there. He was at uh, Kent State, and he didn't get really – he didn't get the Cincinnati job. And he's like, well, this is telling me I can't get where I want, I'm trying to get. So he pivoted and went over to Colorado, and now he's probably the hottest offense coordinator out there. He's always had uh, great offenses. So, And I think how college football is officiated right now, I think Michigan State would be very wise to find a high-powered offense like you see at Washington and some of those other schools just because, you know, they're, they're letting the guys run pick plays and all of that stuff, and everything is dictated to scoring points. So I think that makes a lot of sense, plus – from a recruiting end, he's been around Dion, So, you know, he's going to be a hot name going throughout this year because all of these top recruits are going to be heading to Colorado to see the Dion show. So I think that <laughs> makes a lot of sense. And then uh, I guess uh, the other one, Charles Huff, like he was at Col or Alabama and Penn State, like probably one of the most elite recruiters in the country. Like, like there's a lot of guys that are really good recruiters and like even Mel Tucker, we did that. This he puts Mel Tucker to shame in recruiting, which is hard to do because Mel Tucker is a great recruiter. 
But if you look at the recruits he landed at Penn State as the primary recruiter, the recruits he landed at Alabama as the, the primary recruiter, going to Marshall as a head coach and beating Notre Dame at Notre Dame last year, and I think year two at the program as the head coach, uh, I think he's got the highest ceiling. Young guy where uh, an associate coach for Nick Saban at 36 years old, I mean, or 34, 36 years old, somewhere in that range. So I think he gives you the highest ceiling where I think you look at his offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. He brings in really good player or guys on the staff that end up getting poached from bigger schools. So that's something you want to see is that your guys are leveling up. So I think he checks a lot of the boxes too. And he kind of gives you some of the same things you had with uh, Mel here, as far as that national brand and knowing how to recruit. Uh, but maybe, maybe he, he's, maybe better at finding those coordinators that are coveted all over the country and that you got to hold on to. So he, he would be an interesting name for me too, if they went in that direction. But like I, I've said a bunch of times, I think it's fluid because you're so early into the season and you're not getting, you're probably not getting a guy like a, a you know, a Nick Saban, a PJ Fleck, all those guys that are established, like their floor is what their floor is. Like so, I think there's a lot of wiggle room for coaches over these next this next month coaching. But those are the three that are sticking out to me right now. Huff, by the way, he's he's actually 40 years old. Uh, is not he 34. not 40 now? Yeah, he didn't. But he but done, when he was with Saban, up. though, yeah, when he was yeah. with Saban, though, it's like 34, I think, or 36 <laughs> as the associate head coach. But so which yeah. I, but Nick, that to give it the keys over that quickly is a a, yeah. a pretty big deal. And like you said, like he. He's the guy that kind of he surrounds his staff with heavy recruiters, which I think that's honestly what what the big debate is now is it's like what's more important, having the elite recruiters all throughout that staff or that coach that can really, you know, do the X's and O's. Because, I, I mean, for me, I, I feel like like the the coaching, the great coaching can get you so far, but can it get you over the hump to – because the Big Ten is tough now. Like, it's always tough. But now you're going to add, you know, with Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, some of those schools. But now you're adding USC and Oregon. Uh, Washington's got that offense that's absolutely <laughs> electric. So so it's going to be even tougher to, to win the Big Ten. So do you get a guy that can get you on the cusp or do you go maybe swing for – the fences and get a guy that can get the same type of talent that they're getting at those schools that I just mentioned. Yeah. Hey, look, whoever the coaches, I mean, those, that's a, these are awesome lists by both of you guys. You know, like I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not participating in the list, but I think these are awesome. That's uh, cheap. They, it's just the way it is, but I, whatever, whoever it is must be <laughs> able to attract donor funding for nil yeah. because this is a different world like mel tucker was when he was hired nil wasn't yet legal okay yeah. so look this is a different world and this is going to be one of the top things that high level coaches will be evaluating schools potential schools for and yeah. if you don't have that together it's like a chicken or egg scenario right which one do you want to have and I know right now I've seen comments about that. Hey, nobody's going to give money until we have a coach. Well, the coach isn't coming unless they have the money. And and, and players ain't coming unless they have the money either. We can't get back. I've heard the, the argument. We're just going to get back to just developing guys and get a 2 or $3 million coach and develop guys. And then like the, you know, Mark D'Antonio era in the mid-2000s into the mid-teens. What happens in this day and age if – Le'Veon Bell, Darquez, Denard, you know, all these guys, you know, come in to Michigan State in 2024. Corey, what do you think happens if a two-star by the name of Le'Veon Bell is at Michigan State in 2024? Where What happens in 25 once people see him performing on the field? Uh, the Nick, Sa era? Nick Saban and Kirby Smart pick up the phone. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that that that's just, you nailed it on the head, like, you you've got to have the funding all the way like we know for a fact michigan state will pay whatever coach it is well they'll pay the assistants all that stuff they'll have the facilities they'll have the backing but they they have to that coach has to know that he's playing with a semi-level playing field at least when it comes to nil 
And I think Michigan State has the donors to do that. It's just a matter of them all coming together and rallying mm-hmm. around and saying that, you know what, I don't know that this is going to work, but I'm going to do everything I have to do to try to make it work. <laughs> so, but like, like it, there's going to have to be some leaps on, of faith out there. And maybe, you know, it's easier for me because it's not my money or my thing, but maybe you don't always have to get the Spartan fund credit for your donation like like it'll all come back because we have saw like with mark d'antonio when you were at that that peak kind of in the rose bowl and all that like yeah all the attention that that brings and all of the positive vibes like everything that this university is feeling right now you put that 180 to the other side and that's what you're feeling if you put a winning product out there the money is going to come back to you and just like you look at like uh, Oregon, like their big donor spell night, the man's one of the richest people in the world because he invested in name, image, and likeness and pros. Like now he can do it in college and he's doing it in college because he, he doesn't put necessarily a price on a player or a position because he's spent, he's made his entire career on name, image, and likeness. Like, like how many recruits do you you have uh like Michigan State lost to uh Oregon for a recruit? Like it happened a lot of times. And then you're like, man, Phil Knight drives you nuts because you know what it was. But then you look at it, you have a Nike shirt on, you have some Nike shoes on. Like like, like I mean it, it it is what it is. It's name, image, and likeness works. Phil Knight has proven that. So <laughs> Well, so, I say so, so. I mean, that that's how you got to look at it, whether it's a car dealership or whatever. Like, that's your prototype. But Blockbuster, all that stuff is gone. Nike just keeps going up because it's built off of name, image, and likeness. NFL greater than NIL. Yeah, exactly. Play the long game. Play the long game. So, but, so but, ignore. So, Chu, are you suggesting that kids ignore NIL and just say, "I'm just going to go to the NFL and and forego"? my NIL opportunities. You can you can go to any school if you're a good athlete and you can get NIL money. You can you can come you can get you're not going to get the the millions of dollars. You're going to get enough that you're going to be you're going to you can get a car deal. You can get you can get some money and you can still play at that school, showcase yourself and play at the next level where Hold on. No, no, that's 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 not true. There are some it schools is. that absolutely do, no no it's not true. Y- yes it is. That's absolutely not true. There are schools that just do not have the funding for it. I'm talking in the about Big Ten. You, I'm talking about you can. I'm not talking about this. I'm, you can market yourself as an athlete in today's world and get deals with other people out there. You can do that. You don't need to be, you know, chasing the bag and stuff so. Like so what that. you're saying is, if that particular athlete, but so this is a guy who is a probably a high level athlete, a five star or something like that. He can go he, Indiana or Illinois and have the same effect as he would at a Texas or a Miami it because he's a great athlete then you're saying he should just you know they have they have you know when I'm when I'm referring to a Texas and a Miami I'm talking you know it's known how robust their platform their NIL systems are right so I, I'm not trying to tell you anything that no one knows but you're saying what you're suggesting is that player can have the same I guess raise the same money anywhere in the country. I did not say he can raise the same money. That's why I said NFL will get you more money than NIL will get you. If he can, if he goes to a school that fits his scheme, if if a kid, if a, a great running back or a great lineman go to a school that doesn't have as much NIL, but that he has a great coach that can develop him and get him to the next level, and he's going to get a, a car deal, do different things, and he can go to the league, or is he going to go and chase this bag right now? That's the problem. We have what's your, what's, what, is well, that I don't, I don't, I think, I think that's a flawed way of looking at it because listen, there's a lot of kids that can have that same ideology that you're saying. They can go to a, a lesser school with great talent to a coach they like that they may develop him. He gets hurt, Chew. He gets hurt in college and he could have had literally life changing money. It may not be second contract NFL money, but you're telling me that he'd rather go get a car in Muncie, Indiana at Ball State, then go to a place where Arch Manning is running around. He's got three car deals down there. You know that? Why do I need three car deals? 
I, enough. I'm not money. saying I'm enough not saying that money. that's the deal. I'm saying that he has it's the guy hasn't played a, a down in the college football and is making three point eight million. I'm saying go to somewhere that can develop you for what you want to do. That's the same reason you go to if you're if you're if you're not playing sports and you go to college, you pick a college, you pick a college for what you want to do the next in your next after you're done. So you if you want to go to a nursing, you go to a school that has the best nursing school because it prepares you for the next level. If you want to go to play in the NFL, you go to find a coach that's going to develop you for that level. What my point is that you will do that, and you're going to see players. This is a natural thing. Like so, the 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 ships rise with the tide. You know, everybody they're going to eliminate. They're they're going to eliminate certain schools based on funding, and they'll say which one of the schools up here has more of what I like. <laughs> I understand. That's, that's yeah, just yeah, a, I understand. like if it's you, you too. Like I, I don't believe you would be thinking this way, knowing you the way that I, I know would you, be thinking this you way. Would not I'm thinking the, I'm playing the long game. I'm playing it's, the long it, it game. It is a long game. It's I'm still a long about, game. I'm thinking about going into the league, get a pension, and get a pension, and have that stuff. Have the shield course, behind you for are years. You, are you I'm are not, you suggesting that a player that goes for like a, a the nil a school that has nil and development and good football is you now, see, see, now I'm saying if if it's between developing for the next level and nil, I'm choosing developing for the next level. That's what I'm saying. Well, how, how you wait a minute. Say if I'm an offensive time. lineman and there's if this coach is proven to get guys in the league, but mm -hmm. their school does not have a lot of NIL money, they can give you a little bit. You're going to still be good. Or I don't see that, school, but that that doesn't exist, though. True. What do you mean it doesn't that exist? What you're saying doesn't exist. There yes, isn't an does. offensive line that coach. I'm, I'm telling, line, like, I'm telling you right down now, the road, there's Michigan, not an offensive line coach NIL, out there. But that, he, has that, he has the best. He has the best offensive line the last two years. At Michigan, they don't have the best NIL package for their guys. Yeah, they do. He, no, they have they a don't. great NIL package for their guys. No, they yes, don't. They do. No, they do not. They have NIL, but not not better than Texas, not better than Alabama. If but I'm a lineman and I'm no, getting this, this, so so, we're going to get into details here. We're, this is a good. This is something that like I know <laughs> Spartan Nation, you, you, everyone, people in the chat, people at home are probably <laughs> thinking these same things. So I'm going to take you to task with this. You're talking offensive line. I was just talking in general. Specifically, I'm, I'm talking Texas. about position. Hold on, specific. hold on for a second. Hold on, you're talking about Sean Moore at Michigan, right? The offensive line coach versus the Texas coach. You're talking about Flood, Kyle Flood, okay? Who has won I, two Joe Moore awards while at Alabama, and he was a head coach at Rutgers. So, and, and so you're telling me that it's better for you to go to Michigan because he's just recently won the two. Versus going to Mich to Texas, where there's a guy who has one of them and pumped you a are ton. you are picking schools. I'm picking. No, you just positions. you said, said the schools more. to me. I said more, and a guy at another school that has a robust NIL program. I'm gonna go where I can get developed for the next level because I'm playing the long game. I, it's okay. I'm, it's okay. I, all I'm I saying is it. that it's one fine. and the same. They're the same thing. It is like, not the you're same. Not, you're not. It is you, not the you, same. It's it's the lottery ticket thing right now. People want that instant gratification uh, right away. Some there are those players too. Okay. We know that there's a lot of players out here making bad decisions just for money. But when you're okay. when you're getting into, it, you can't blank. It's not a blanket statement. It's not. You can't say that like just because you go where there's money, it means you're not going to get developed. Um, just because you're getting developed doesn't mean you're not you're not going to get money. There's, so you, there, you, you can, I'm saying, you I'm both. against, and there's you, a lot you, of you them. should choose what's going to prepare you for your craft over right. the instant money right now. That's what so what, what, what we're what we're employing, what we're asking, what we're talking about with the fan base right now is to say, look, we need to get an aisle because we can do both here. Both don't don't allow talent players that love the campus and love the would love to be a Spartan, let them off the hook because they would say, look, I, I just look, I, I love you guys. But this coach right here, he hasn't put 10 first rounders in the league in the last five years. He's put six. And, but he's paying me and you're not. That, it's splitting hairs. But like at the end of the day, he's got family. He's got built. People really do. Players, athletes, uh, you know, I know this from my sons around their, their teammates around the country, man. They get they feel slighted. And I know that we don't understand that the recruits feel slighted when you don't offer them the money. They don't see that, oh, well, the, the donors are fighting and they don't understand. They can't. They just say, oh, you, you must not want me. Because and these are 16, 17-year-old kids. Turned. It's gone from 
you know, you can develop me for that it, to give me the bag. Is gone to chasing the bag. That's ah, what man, that's a that's a smaller percentage. I don't think no, it's always that. No. I, I, I disagree that all no. kids are chasing bags. That's not the case. But yeah. kids will make good decisions for their families. I, I look. I don't. I, am I going to sit here and say uh, uh, like Keon? Everybody's saying he's chasing bags. That's an absolute lie. That's an absolute lie. I can say that with a million percent confidence that people out there think that Keon got a lot more money. He got less money than Michigan State had. And I'll put that on the record. Okay? So the 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 idea that people are out here, I don't care what position you play, are just chasing bags all the time is just not true. Yeah. And it's unfair for those kids to be labeled as such. Yeah. So that's I'm not saying that's all kids are chasing bag, but I'm saying majority of those kids are chasing bag as they're not thinking about the long game. They're not thinking about getting themselves right for this. It's thinking about, I'm going to go to this place because they're going to give me the most money as opposed to, I'm going to go to this place because they look at all those kids that transfer from, from uh, Texas A&M. They chase the bag down there and they transfer from there. Let's let's listen. That's because Texas A&M was giving them up front money, which is a mistake on their part. But let's let's go before pre-NIL. Pre-NIL, kids were going to Jordan school. Remember that? They would go to Jordan schools because they thought they would get unlimited Jordans. And I've been to camps where coaches, guys down the road, were holding up Jordans and making guys race 40-yard sprints to see whoever wins it gets a pair of like. Listen, man, people, kids want things like pe- humans are just built that way. Right. But if you have good counsel, if you have people that you can trust that can guide you at all, uh, then you're going to see less and less of that as this continues to develop and evolve. I, and I, I get it. I, I think I think NIL is great. NIL empowers the student athletes. It does. Yeah. I'm all for it. But I think sometimes enough is plenty. All right, that's what I think. Sometimes uh, I, I, I think you I think they, the only, only fix though is is for you to go like because they're getting paid now. That's not 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 happening again. Like you you don't get paid and then not get paid. So I think what you have to do is look at the NBA, the NFL, get player unions, put parameters and how it all works because you do have to like every sport is better because of the parity. So, so now it's up to college football to figure out how do we get parity. I mean, obviously for me, I think the obvious answer is you get rid of the NCAA, <laughs> but uh, and then and then you you create your rules and you you uh, actually enforce them, which would be new to college sports uh, <laughs> because that's the problem. I mean, like every coach in college uh, is basically like a cannibal. <laughs> Like, like they, they're like, if I don't do it, someone else is going to do it. So they all do it because, but that's just because the NCAA never backs anything for a punishment. Like, like the NFL would like to be like that, but they're not going to be like that because they understand there's rules in place and parameters and salary caps, tampering, all that stuff. So I, I think the only way you get there is if you put rules in place. And then as far as like you guys were saying too, like, like NIL is just another factor, whether it's facilities, development, uh, campus life, education, like it just becomes another factor. But as humans, like money, money's what drives a lot of us. Like, like we're not gonna go take a, like for this show, like, like if you're getting paid to do this show for, for an hour, are you going to go do it for, uh ten dollars are you gonna do it for ten thousand dollars so you know we're just driven we'll take by... that. Oh, listen now that's that he talking now ain't he true <laughs> he, he <laughs> <laughs> hey we keep arguing like this maybe we'll get up there you know like right. Stephen a and uh oh up you know what i'm talking about right what are you talking about now, listen look skip, this is good stuff skip. Man. <laughs> did, did you see that that, that, that reporter funny. from new york saying that he's gonna eat half an edible and get drunk or yes. yes. and then place a bet in colorado to, <laughs> to be oregon and then then eat the other half <laughs> yes. oh my goodness look we got we we gotta get to the game 
the homecoming game is coming up. 107th homecoming game is coming up here in Spartan Stadium this weekend. We're going to break that down in a moment after this message from SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers guy. Game-winning interception. First down. Just a nice, solid tackle. If you're in arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so we can focus on what he does best, smacking palms. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more, so fans can fan. All right. Now look, we all kiss and hug. Everything's all good. Yeah, See, well, I don't know why people thought we like we athlete. We can talk. We can we talk. We, we go. This is every day. Yeah. What <laughs> we go drink a beer right after. <laughs> uh, yeah, we do need to do this out of this is part of tailgate. You know what I'm saying? I, I like that. Maryland preview, man. So look, Maryland kicks off 3:30 Eastern time on NBC this Saturday. MSU leads the series 10 to 3, you know, and this is in East Lansing. MSU leads the series 7 to 1. Last time in, you know, Maryland played Michigan State in College Park. It was 27 to 13. That was back in 22. Uh, but Maryland right now is 3 and 0, coming off a win against Virginia, 42 to 14. Here is the stat breakdown brought to you by Maine Financial Group. Uh, Spartan Wealth, Spartan Nation's number one wealth manager. Be sure to go to mainfinancialgroup.com. Jordan, Maine, and all the fellows over there take great care of you. Guys, look, we just had the stats, so if you could pull those back up. You can see their stats, 3-0. and You know, head coach Mike Loxley, they are number one in the Big Ten, 480 yards per game offensively, Chu. Yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're explosive offense. Um um, Tonga Valoa, he's he's a, he's a Russell Wilson type quarterback. And I'm, when I say Russell Wilson, I'm saying Russell Wilson when he was winning Super Bowls in Seattle, not Denver Russell Wilson when he got <laughs> when he got married to Sierra and then his game went downhill. But you know that's a different story. But you no, know, he he's like a Houdini in the back there. You know he he can beat you with both his arms and his legs. You know, unlike Penix Jr., Penix wanted to throw the football. He wanted to sit back there and keep a clean pocket and throw the ball. But uh, Tanavaloa. <laughs> Tali, um, Tali. Tali. Yeah. Uh, he, he, um, he's a guy that he can, but he also, he scrambles to throw. He's a good scrambling quarterback. And people get the difference between a scrambling quarterback and a running quarterback, two different things. A scrambling quarterback is a quarterback mm. that moves around by keeping their eyes downfield, wanting to throw. A running quarterback is first read, second read's not there. They're taking off and they're tucking the ball and they're going. So that's the difference between, you know, a scrambling quarterback and a running quarterback. Uh, and this guy, he's a scrambling quarterback. The Spartans' defense will have to wrap him up when they get to him in the backfield. So his, this is Tali is Tua's brother. People, if you might remember Tua Tungavaloa from University of Alabama and now of the Miami Dolphins, this is his brother. That's big bro. And this is his senior year at Maryland. So he gets a lot of tips. He's around NFL talent. I mean, he's got NFL bloodlines. And like you said, I mean, seeing in that tape right there, he's a guy who can move that launch point, which can drive defensive coordinators crazy. So it's imperative that Hazel, Scotty Hazleton, you know, obviously Harlan Barnett, everyone is able to bottle him up, keep him contained and put pressure on him any way they can. Because, and don't lose the eye control. And, you know, it would be great to have Otis on this show right now to break down the defensive secondary because of the way – receivers if you start seeing a scrambling quarterback like you just described you want to and you off. think he's gonna threaten that line of scrimmage you might run up and then you let your guy and that that's what they thrive on right absolutely when you when you see that it's this game the the secondary has to be very disciplined that is that is the that is the name of the game this week discipline because like you said stray scramble rules come in effect if a quarterback starts moving out of the pocket now offensively we have we work on scramble drills what happens when you do this and so it can get it turns to a little bit of a schoolyard there and then it's that for the defender that mindset of oh i can go make the play and coach d always would say don't take the cheese don't take the cheese 
and uh, you think you got it, you go and try to take that cheese and boop, over your head for a touchdown. Mm. Corey, do you know like uh, any of the athletes that are on Maryland's team? Have you covered any of these guys uh, extensively at all in your days at 247? Uh, I mean, I've seen some of them. I, I don't think Michigan State and them went head to head a lot for a lot of the guys, but they have great athletes. I think Mike Loxley, uh, he's he's in his year six, I believe, right now. And getting talent has never been his issue. I think discipline had always been kind of their Achilles heel as a team. But I mean, you look at the roster and like they got speed, they got size, athleticism, length, they got everything that you want. A lot of these guys are going to go play in the NFL. So so he's always brought in talent. It's just a matter of getting it disciplined. And I think, too, how you were talking about the offense, too, when you get a guy like a, a quarterback that scrambles like that, like you, you almost lose some aggressiveness in your pass rush because you got to hold the edge. So then yeah. that, the, you know, it's like that thing because if, if you crash, then he's going to take off out the edge and then either take off or hit a guy – once you have to suck up to kind of get them. So, so you lose your aggressiveness with a quarterback like that. So that's tough. And yeah, they, they have talent all over. Uh, Loxley's done a great job recruiting, you know, all over the country. He's kind of went with that uh, saving mold. You know, a lot of He's those been guys. recruiting since Ron Zook days back at Illinois. Yeah. I remember yeah, Loxley. He, he, that, He's a hell of a they, they all know looking for it's them great athletes that have good size and length and you look at Maryland's roster up and down on both sides of the ball and that's what you see is just big athletes that can run you got some plays here too we want to break down a little bit yeah yeah we can we can do that or we we have the stat comparisons but up to either one bring up the stat comparisons here Tony yeah let's see there you All have right. it there you go. Yeah, you know, total yards, you know, Maryland, that high potent offense, you know, averaging 480 yards to Michigan State's 377. The passing, you know, hovering at that 300 Maryland is in the two, 263. And so rushing the ball, that's going to be huge this game. So, uh, you know, with that said, let's jump into some breakdown of some plays here. <laughs> some breakdown. Fan favorite. Yes, the first one here, we got a simple – this is this is a bread-and-butter power play. What's supposed to happen here? This fullback here, he's going to go. He's going to block the end man on the line of scrimmage. That right guard, the guard on top of your screen, he's going to peel around, and he's supposed to take the Mike backer. Mike, M for Mike, is the middle of the three. So he's, he's going to go and take that Mike backer. Um, and uh, those two linemen are going to double down to the to the back to the backside backer there, and it should be an easy hole to go there. You can't pass one to get one. And we see on this here on this play that when we play it, this guard's going to miss his guy. And if you do that, they're going to come in and stick you. These linebackers are will be downhill players, and they will put a hat on the on on the football. Let's so let's play it here. Fullback takes the end man that you see. That mm, the pulling missed guard him. misses the Mike Backer, and can't who makes the play? You know, so he he has to get his guy. You you can't pass one to get one. So off you have to be on your keys. You know, fullback does a great job. Same arm, same shoulder, inside kicking him out. That that this lineman needs to he needs to identify where his guy is. He's his guy's gonna move. You can't go to where he started. You know that straight in pulling. You can't go to where he's gonna be. You can't. That's be, right. He started over here, so this is where he's going to be. No, this guy's going to move when the ball snaps. So you have to be able to understand and identify where he's going to be. So if this if this guard would have made this play, this running back could have squeaked through for a, for a nice gain on this Nice play. game. So let's see it. Let's see it go through here. Miss, boom. Yep. Yeah, I can't stand to see that with guards. Uh, Miss blocks in. Here's a, a better view of it on the field level. Corey, we're going to get you some, you know, some good film. You're going to be studying this stuff up now, man. You're going to be ready now. Look, I, I, we don't want to bore you anymore with this stuff. I, I think you did a phenomenal job giving us some insight into the transfer portal, recruiting and all those things, Michigan State football. You know, we really appreciate your time here with us, man. As always, you're welcome anytime. Thank you for being on the show. And I'd uh, love to have you again real soon. 
Appreciate it, Corey. You're muted, brother. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, anytime I'm, you guys need me, I'm here. And then uh, let let me know where the uh, tailgate is. I'll swing by this weekend. Oh, uh, yeah. We got one for you. Okay. <laughs> See you Saturday. See ya. Corey Robinson, everybody. Let's continue the breakdown. Yeah, so let, let's go down to when Maryland, they're going to, they, when they blitz the football, when they blitz now, and uh, this is just a simple six man protection. Stray, you, I'm talking your language right now. You know, the five <laughs> down linemen, they, they're responsible for the four down and the mic backer. That's the it. running back has everybody else in this because it's a six man protection. He's the only one in the backfield there. So, the, the line, they have the four guys that are down in a three-point stance and the middle of the three, that Mike Backer, that's right there. So the running back, now you start to scan. You start to scan from the strength, which is going to be the bottom of the, of the screen there because that's where the tight end is. The tight end always sets the strength in the offense. So you start from there and work your way at the next backer, and then what you do is you, you assess the top. So you look at the secondary, then you then you go back to what we talked about last week. Let's pick up in that corner cat, that Corvette, that cowboy blitz. So now <laughs> you have this. So if you let's play it a little bit. So we you got a single high here, here, baby. It's pressure. It's single okay, high. Okay, let's go back to the top. Let's go back to the top a little bit. So we saw that guy walk back, walk down. There's still eight seconds on the play clock right now. What this quarterback should do is hey. This he's coming, he's coming. Move the running back to the other side so the running back does not have to do what they call a cross key block yeah. going across the front of the quarterback, risking you know running into him. So Bad that position, is what man. you do. So, but the running back does a great job of doing that cross key block there and, and picking up the back. So that's the thing with Maryland's defensive line. They're not going to have penetration. They're going to go up, stand you up, and try to hold the line of scrimmage. That's what they're going to do. They're not going to get back there. So if we can protect our quarterback this week, we should be able to get away with plays like this. Simple pitch and catch. Simple pitch mm -hmm. and catch. The line has the four down and the mic. The backer, the running back has whoever else is left. All right. So let's go to the next one. You can't get fooled. You cannot get fooled. So this play right here. Now they go to a three down mm -hmm. front. All right. So it's a three down front. They're still playing. They're playing a 34 defense now. They have the safety walk down. Actually, a, a three five. Actually, they have the, the linebacker out there in space in the slot. They're taking over the, and they're playing a zone in the back end there. And traditionally, you think because that this uh, guy on the top of the key there in the red jersey in the top there, that linebacker, he's in what they call a motorcycle stance. And when you see a guy in what they call a motorcycle stance, your thought process is he's going to be blitzing. So your antennas and tentacles go up. You think that he's going to be blitzing. But what they do here, they do a great job of disguising that, you know, have him mug up like he's going to blitz and then drop back in the zone. So what this 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 quarterback predetermined it. He thought this guy was blitzing. That lineman was going to cut him, put his hands down, and he's going to have that easy uh, pitch and catch to that quick out running running on the outside that you can't predetermine your throws. You have to see things through. So that, that backer comes, acts mm. like he's blitzing on the snap of it, drops to the drops back and makes that pick, cuts it off and makes that pick. You look like 40 inch arms, man. <laughs> go, go gadget. Yes. So but that's, <laughs> that's what it is. But this Maryland's defense, they're successful, susceptible to, different types of things our receivers have to win because one like i mentioned in the beginning the, the defensive line does not penetrate they're going to come up mm. and hold up and try to see where it is and try to shed you off so if our offensive line can protect we can have place like this happen if our receivers win so let's go to the next one there Receivers, they're playing man across the up, up top there. Receivers, they have to win. Like I said, the defensive line is, is not going to penetrate. We need to have time back there, and our receivers win. I think we have receivers that can win, and we will be successful when something like this will happen. Oh, it's getting over the top, baby. Easy, 
Easy yeah. money. Easy money. That is what can happen if we protect. You see the off the defensive linemen. They're not rushing downfield. They're just holding up on the snap. They come up and hold up. So I think this game, I'm very optimistic about this game. I think, you know, we have a shot. Our offense is going to get back rolling. I think we, we, we will be able to run the football on these guys. The biggest thing is we have to wrap up that quarterback. We have to go there and wrap him up. We can't let him pull a Houdini, you know, those plays that they get back there. The crowd goes excited, think it's a sack, and all of a sudden he – he pops up on the hash the opposite side and slinging the rock down the field there. So we have to be able to do those things. Our DBs, our secondary, have to be disciplined and stay on their guys because it's gonna be, he's going to do a lot of movement. He's going to do a lot of scrambling in the pocket there. Hey, this is great breakdown stuff. I've been telling you, this is the master's class of film breakdown. If you tune in on Thursday nights here with This is Part of MSU, J.U., I mean, this is great <laughs> stuff. You know, I, I, look – Mike linebacker, motorcycle stances. I mean, you you getting them, you getting them coached up, baby. All right. Write it down and go back and watch it again if you didn't hear that properly the first time. It's okay. You know, that's what film study is. Click, 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 keep re rewind. Trevor, to answer your question on that, when they jumped the route like that, can MSU counter with an out and up? Um, you can't, but he the 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 reason that happened is the quarterback predetermined to throw. He thought that guy was going to blitz. That corner was still back there in the zone. He had he has his his third of the field there. So he you know the the quarterback assumed that that guy was going to blitz and the lineman was going to cut him. And so he was going to be able to take that quick three three step and throw that pill to the speed out there. If that would have happened, that was the right read for the quarterback. But the guy he he fooled him. He he mugged up on there and then dropped back there. So you won't you won't you could do the out and up, but you have to not predetermine it. Yeah, Noah Kim actually did that, executed this same play beautifully against Washington in the first quarter, but the blitz actually came. Mm -hmm. And he threw in the pressure. That's a hot read. That's what they call that. You throw right into pressure where there's a void in coverage when someone is coming towards you. Throw right at them over the head. There's usually a, a, a receiver wide open, but you can't predetermine. Never predetermine. Like, we don't right. like quarterbacks that break the huddle knowing where they're throwing the ball. No, the Just only can't. time you can you can do that, you can do when you have what they call mirror concepts. Both sides are running the same routes, and so you just pick a side that you're going to go to based off what leverage the defense is giving you. Uh, Man, yeah. I think we're, we're doing too much coaching here. You, you guys, need to, <laughs> they're going to be able to take our jobs in a minute. I know, right? You guys, <laughs> we need we need all that money to get a big board so Stray and I can be up there. You That's know, all we need the money for, them. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it right there, so we can like actually circle things, you know, like uh, John Madden. <laughs> back in the day yeah uh, great stuff here look again everybody make sure you are at michigan state this weekend for the homecoming cheer on the guys it's going to be a celebration a homecoming parade all kinds of things we're going to be sending out on our social media so that everybody can be there and uh support the michigan state team and come back to michigan state if you're a spartan this is a great game. Go ahead, Chu. <laughs> I knew you were going to do <laughs> I'm, I, you know, I was having a good day today, Stray. I was having a good day. And, what and then I got, I got disappointed. What happened? I got disappointed at our viewers. Well, no likes? No, no, no. I No, earlier before we came on, I was like, you know what? We're posting all this stuff on Instagram. Let me go see, you know, how many uh, followers we have on Instagram. Right now we're at 1,430. That's disappointing. That's just that that that, that, that 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 that's disappointing. We need you guys. We need to if we don't get to appreciate that donation, Sean. If we don't get to uh what sixteen hundred by Tuesday, I'm not coming on the show. There we go. I'm and, not coming and on, on. And on YouTube, we're at sixteen hundred. We got to get to two thousand. How about that? Let's just make it really aggressive. Two thousand. Two thousand on YouTube. Yeah. 16 on Instagram, or I'm not coming on the show. I'm not coming on Tuesday. You won't see me. <laughs> you heard it here. Get you. Get get him. Get him what he needs so we can all eat in peace and sleep in peace. Because, like, you know, me and him like to argue, oh, this 1999 from oh. Cal. We got us an NIL deal. <laughs> Thank you, I hop. That's enough to maybe buy a, a stack or two. Yeah. And, he knows it's coming right back to him anyway. 
Yeah, you know, but no, hey, we really truly appreciate that. We guys. don't get those numbers up. You won't see me Tuesday. So you guys, he he ha ha now. But then Tuesday come, where's true? And y'all didn't do your part. We doing ours, breaking it down like this. He'll protest in a heartbeat. <laughs> there we go. Nine ninety nine. I mean, I do. But I feel like I'm gonna be one of those. Uh, Auctioneers. <laughs> Auctioneers. Yeah, $20. Oh, dang, that's it. 20 There it is. Hey, listen, we're going we gonna to stay here for a little while longer. <laughs> I mean, man, listen to that. I, we, we, we truly appreciate you guys. There's a Steve, James, Cal, and Sean. That's big Ooh, time. I'm sweating, man. boy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Breakdown have me sweating, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, oh man, guys. We know, truly, we really appreciate everyone that's watching the show. In all seriousness, uh, this was this was great. Rolanda, hey, twenty. Damn, we gonna win too. We gonna win this weekend, Darren. We gonna win. We gonna yeah, win. We gonna win. Was, we, those boys are gonna be ready. Those boys are gonna be ready. Ain't no shell shock. Ain't nothing. We gonna, we gonna win because be of your DNA, Darren. You are gonna be out there on that field. Maybe not physically, but your yeah. Listen. 21. Now look at whoa. <laughs> hey, Darren, we 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 gonna we, we tell your son we got his back. Hey, look at this. this there's a bidding on, war on going Wednesday. on here. This is part of MSU. I saw 21 at practice on Wednesday. Yeah, he came, up, came up, dapped me up, you know. He, he out look? there doing his thing, out there doing his thing. Man, right. let's, 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 it will not let's let me see. do 21. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it was? So Rolanda was trying to do 21 in honor of the Tatum family. Man, listen, this is awesome. But like I, you know, I'm afraid to, to to shut it off because I'm probably gonna get punched and yelled at and everything else if I end the show too soon. But like we absolutely thank you all. Uh come back and see us Tuesday night at eight o'clock. We'll be here. I might not. And Otis might be here. And Otis, me and Otis for sure will be here, but you might not if you don't get into 1600 and 2000 on YouTube. No, honestly, everybody, we really thank you for your support. Uh, that'll be a wrap for today's show. I, 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 am I, is it okay? Let me, is it okay? Yeah, we can wrap. <laughs> for everybody, for Otis Wiley, who's on assignment, and J.U. Choo Choo Coco, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is part of MSU. Have a good night. God bless you. And go green. Go white. This is Sparta MSU is a combined presentation of Playfly Sports Properties and Michigan State Sports Properties. The show is produced by Tony LaBarbera, Tony Gastella, and Process Driven Consulting. Additional support is provided by Brendan Duravage. On location technical support provided by Good Fruit Video. Be sure to follow our host Jason Strayhorn, J.U. Culprit, and Otis Wiley on social media. To stay up to date with all the latest This is Sparta news, please like and subscribe by visiting our link tree and tell a friend to do the same. Thank you for your support. And as always, go green.